Hello everyone. I welcome you all to the third edition of Indian Debating League powered by Ogly and IIT Debsoc, um, which is from Delhi and we're really, really excited to host you in Delhi based on the qualifiers that we're going to have very shortly beginning uh, by the end of this month. And I'm sure that you all are also very excited to attend the same. So Indian Debating League is the most prestigious public speaking and debating tournament. By far, we have trained 68,000 plus debaters. We have organized and sent debaters to 100 plus debating tournaments. And we have basically joined in multiple premium schools. So what we actually need you to understand is that Indian Debating League is one of the most prestigious and um, competitive tournaments in India, um, by far the largest in India as well. Uh, this is the third time we're organizing it. This is the screenshot from first time when we organized it from 2021. You can see junior debaters like you who were able to make it, make it to the state rounds, but also performed extremely well throughout the journey. Uh, they also had their own background. So the thing that you're seeing right now is Maharashtra, Team Maharashtra. And they created their own Zoom backgrounds in order to just have uh, as fun as possible in the entire journey of debating. Um, this is Harish Rajan. I just yes. have a question. I'm just wondering, all of you, and you can raise your hand, please, for it. Uh, do you think a, a, a computer or a robot can defeat us on debating? And after you can share, stop sharing the screen. So, Kavit, you think they can? Just whoever thinks that the computer or <laughs> can debate and beat a human being can you raise your hands ma'am my uh, my internet's not working can i switch off, uh, switch off my camera yeah yeah and i think that will help so who have, who thinks that a computer or robot can defeat us while debating so do you all think that computer and ai is better than human beings okay so we have a show of hands one two three four five six seven eight Okay, I uh, Afrin, do you want to tell us about Harish Natrajan? So Harish Natrajan is arguably one of the best debaters in the world, and he was able to defeat artificial intelligence or computer in debating as well. So have you seen Chat GPT where you can ask anything in like five seconds and then they ask you to Chat uh, GPT does my homework. Oh my god, you shouldn't you, <laughs> you shouldn't be doing that. But <laughs> But have you seen ChatGPT basically answering um, all of your queries in just seconds? Uh, Harish Natarajan has the ability to basically make arguments and speeches within seconds. Um, and that's not just with Harish Natarajan. With practice, we all can do that. Um, and like, and the, the, the basic difference between human and AI generally is that we have so much more ability to think. We have so much more ability to have creative, like creative um creative skills and stuff like that. So I think in order for you to compete with AI, the understanding is that you should probably continuously exercise your brain and cognitive skills so that I think AI could probably give you three reasons for something that you would you, you would ask them, but humans can give you more than three reasons and probably the better reasons to do so. Um, and therefore humans are something which are obviously, uh, we can always debate on that, but this is why the theme is also something which is similar ancient India to artificial intelligence and yeah. we'll also come back to that. Uh, but yes, this is why I think we the want biggest... You all, we want you all to go and look up Harish Natarajan. Okay? So <laughs> today when you finish, please go and look that up. Thank you so much. You can put your hands down. All right. So... This is this is why we want to create an aspiration within debaters in debaters in India, um, so that we can not only just organize tournaments but train them in order to represent India at international level. Uh, we have done it done it previously. We have sent teams to Harvard, uh, Yale Invitational, LSC, Imperial College, and all of where I think I think our teams did absolutely wonderful. All of which was possible just because we were able to train them well, but also the zeal and the enthusiasm that small debaters and like really, really small um, like students were able to uh, inculcate all of these small, small details of practice and um, and hard work is what makes you a better debater rather than just probably saying that, hey, I'm a born debater. Uh, probably you are, but then practice is what makes you a perfect individual. So, so what Afreen ma'am is saying is that if you are today discussing with your mother, and debating with her whether you can go down to play early, you are doing the right thing. Okay. So, Afreen, maybe we could start with the definition of what a speech is and what a debate is as we go forward. 
because this is our most favorite category, the junior most. Uh, we love the fact that you want to know about the world. We love the fact that you want to voice your opinions and we want to make sure that we encourage you. So you can stop sharing the screen and maybe just have a discussion on speech versus debate after and then we can introduce them to what we are going to tell them. All right. Um, so I think one of, okay, let's just try to um, understand it, this by a few questions. So um, how many of you all think that speech and debate is basically the same thing? So you do understand that there is a difference between speech and debate. Um, which one do you think is more interesting? Speech? How many of you all feel speech is more interesting? Okay. Okay, there's one person. Ma and how many like feel that listening a lecture from the teacher? Uh-huh. It's like listening a lecture from the teacher. Yes, speech is just one-sided. So that's exactly the difference between debate and speech. Speech is something which is just individual. Um, uh, I just prepared one speech. I just wrote a couple of lines together. And there's just one point that I'm trying to uh, put forward in few words or like a, like a whole sentence and stuff like that. But when it comes to debate, it's more than that. You're trying to convince your point. You're trying to basically take a stance in what has been given to you. And that's more interesting. Do you know why? Because humans are able to give their own opinion much more firmly. For example, how many of you all believe that um, pizza is better than burger? Okay. Team pizza. Pizza right. is the best. Yes, exactly. So the fact that you have this opinion or this belief is because you have certain reasons to say that. Um, there could be some people who would believe that burger is better than pizza. At a point in time, when you're basically uh, presenting different views and you're trying to convince the other person that your view is better than the other, that's what debating actually stands for. So debating starts where there is difference of opinion and difference of belief. And speech is just one-sided. It's just one person trying to say something. But then debate is much more engaging because you get to prove your point, but you also get to disprove the other person's point. For example, I could say that, hey, pizza is so much more better because um, I get to choose my own toppings. And who doesn't love cheese? Um, there's so much more variety in pizza. But what's there in burger? So I think, I mean, there, this could be so like other way around of saying that, hey, burger could just be more nutritious or you get everything in burger and stuff like that. But the idea is that there is a conflict of opinion and that's when you start debating. Um, I hope like debating and speech has become like clear. But I think the more important thing is that in debate, you get to ask questions to the other side. You get to uh, challenge your other, like the, your opponents. But in speeches, you probably don't have to, or you can't pr probably do so. Um, in debate, you can basically weigh out as to why your opinions are more important than the other. So it's more competitive. You're basically comparing your opinion and telling that why you are probably the best in the lot of people that are actually existing uh, within the same room, which is why um, I think debating is much more interesting to begin with. Um, how many of y'all want to be like the best debater of India? Everybody. Oh, wow. <laughs> so lovely. <laughs> lovely. Because, because that's that's why uh, we're here. I think I'm really, really, really happy that uh, we have so many more debating enthusiasts. Um, wonderful. I think we will have surely one of you, many of you, <laughs> becoming the best debaters of India. Um, fair. But do you also understand that there's no objectively best debater? So... Debating is so subjective that probably for me, Yuval is the best debater. Um, but for, probably for Anjali, ma'am, um, let's say Bhavika is the best debater because um, it's based on your ability to convince the other person. Probably your ability to convince your mother is better. But then when it comes to your dad, you probably struggle. So for in the point of view of your mother, you're probably a better debater. But then in the point of view of your father, you're probably not a good debater. So I think it's very subjective as well. So just because probably you're losing one round or just because you did not perform well in one of the rounds, that does not mean that you're not a good debater um, in general. So I think that's, that's the point. Again, let's go forward with the training session. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. I just wanted to share uh, like... Uh, in my uh, like I go to school, so I go by van. So once, uh, you know, now 
in my van some people do a lot of overreacting so we had a small debate on uh, this topic so i did it with uh, some i also did i also participated in this debate and did it with one of the child who was in third that's great um okay so let's go to the Ma'am? training just a second is this okay go on you man that's going to be the last Ma'am, so basically mm-hmm. what you said about mother and father <laughs> for me it's the exact opposite okay <laughs> it happens so it could be literally opposite so for example my dad probably is convinced so, so much easier like it's just easier to convince my dad but then it's just not easy for me to convince my mom so i think it depends on your parents as well uh, but that's also why it's subjective so that's that's you proved my point Can let's I ask go something mom okay i'll now go into the more serious um information about the tournament and in case if you have any doubts then keep your keep your hands up otherwise just keep it down as of now because i think at the end of the day we are here to compete um so what should you actually look um in terms of in you will the- look forward to lovely prizes and gifts you will also <laughs> look forward to representing your states okay yes. because in this tournament we've got 36 teams coming from 28 states and 8 union territories that's a number i want you to remember that there are 28 states in india and eight union territories and you all have a chance to represent your state in the junior category yes. right and afreen ma'am i think because this slide is more for the middle school yeah. upwards that's why i want to make sure that when you explain the format we tell them that there were three chances right and beyond that it's a lot of lot of surprising gifts so i think um this is in terms of logistics your trading is going to be from 9th to 21st uh because you're the first phase registration your trading starts from 9 which is today and then it is going to be 11 yeah so, till 12 till till 11th yes so it's three day training um and then you get to ask questions you get to engage you get to mock all of this will happen in these th- three days after which you'll have your qualifiers which is going to be from 26th october to 7th of november which is going to be all online based on your performance we're going to select the top few debaters to debate offline at iit delhi which is very interesting um so yeah the idea is that you we train you you perform and you work hard and then based on your performance we select the best debaters to come and represent their teams um to iit delhi offline um now before i start with the theme is there i think okay is there specific doubts on this particular slide one question miss one okay. question will we have to travel to delhi or will we we'll be in mumbai only so for offline if you get selected to um to debate offline finals then yes um otherwise till 7th of november the entire tournament is going to be online um miss okay yes ma'am ma'am excuse me ma'am ask excuse me ma'am i want to ask a question okay just a second i want you to keep your hands up and then i'll ask you uh, to ask me a uh, vaishnavi what's your doubt ma'am after 11th october will it be like uh, the competition will start no the competition will only start uh, from the dates of the tournament that i showed you uh, but after 11th october you can just continuously prepare um we can tell you as okay. to how you can prepare by yourself but this is only the three day session that you're going to you're going to okay all right um who else wanted to ask a question aradhya uh, ma'am me also okay i'll i'll come back to you dash aradhya what's your question ma'am i wanted to ask we're not going to have the tournament in the morning as because of school um so with respect to schedule i think we'll try to make sure that it's um during the time when students don't have school uh, but we will share you the schedule as soon as possible um why i want to miss school okay i mean um that's your personal choice <laughs> if you want but to but a lot of teachers are also nominated students so we thought it's safer to keep it in the it should be ma'am teach you math then you have to do it so it's so perfect i and then we are hoping that you'll make it till the 27th of november because that's definitely a monday Ma'am, do it in the evening, please. I don't want to miss school. 
yeah you want it's all yeah, so for most people we will actually make sure that it's in evening and we don't actually because you shouldn't be like you shouldn't be forced to choose school and debating it's a part of school itself um extracurriculars okay um darsh what's your doubt uh that um speech is is when you say something uh, about something in uh in front of many people but debating means when you differentiate and not agree with the other person in front of many people mm mm-hmm. so that's correct yeah that's correct yes um okay. yes sir oh, ma'am what is the topic of the debate that is what i'm coming at um so if you guys let me move forward i will tell you about the theme of the tournament uh, but are there any specific question to the tournament um then i'll entertain them otherwise we'll move towards the more exciting ma'am, part the topic ma'am what is the time limit for the debate i will tell you all of that by the end of this session so all right i think we need to ma'am, ma'am. nobody speaks without me asking you to speak but this is going to be the last point um nitara tell me So, ma'am, it's my birthday on twenty seventh October. So I was saying that can we do it later because it's my birthday. So, so after that, we'll come to that later. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, but uh, congratulations coming up. Okay. So, Afi, ma'am, let's go yeah. next. <laughs> so, what is the theme of the tournament? I think most of you all have probably seen it till now. but it is ancient india to ai led india ai is artificial intelligence so we're basically covering a large um a large era of topics themes and sub themes so it starts from ancient india where you had harappa vedic culture buddhism um a lot of civilization in india then you have medieval india where you have mughals architecture rajputs etc and then you have modern india which is british colony industrialization technology um, and current issues so modern india is right now as well but the idea is that you will get to debate a lot about history what happened in india you'll get to learn a lot about india the roots of india how has science come into picture how did india uh basically get a lot of development in different fields all of which is going to be really really helpful for your studies in general but also is going to be very very helpful for general knowledge uh which is why we have chosen this topic we want to we want every indian to be inspired from the roots that india has been able to um show and a lot of history that has been just forgotten by individual individuals so i think we all all want to appreciate the historical um part of india that has been forgotten and we really want people to realize and remember all of the historical heroes that we have had till now so this is this is what the themes are going to cover but for your round one which is individual one versus one and i'm going to come back to that later but for your round one most of the topics are going to be based on the historical scientific developments of india um or technological developments of india so think about neem think about cosmetic surgeries think about everything that comes from india but has been stolen from india by different countries um so this is what exactly um we are going to see in terms of topics i'll show you a couple of examples of what the topic could be uh but it's more in terms of your research for what did india do what did india discover why did it go away from us what is the idea of um how can we get it back how can we make sure that like all of these things are being recognized again um and stuff like that but are there any questions on the theme let's take questions only on theme so if it's on theme raise your hand and i'll ask you to ask question nobody speaks i have one nobody speaks okay uh vaishnavi what's your okay okay um somebody who's named is uh, who's named as samsung sm can you please rename yourself the name great uh yeah hi this is uh, satvik's mother i'm mm-hmm. also uh, i've also joined with him i wanted to first understand that first of all it's grade 3 and the topic seems to be very vast for a mm-hmm. 
student in class three, like he doesn't understand many basic terms like architecture and Harappa culture, civilization. This comes really late. Maybe it's in history books of class sixth, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, to make them understand all of this is, uh, I believe, a challenge. And uh, and another thing I wanted to understand, like uh, you, in a debate, there is someone for the motion and against the motion. Uh, if, a, if and it's not a declamation contest. Mm -hmm. So if everybody is just going to talk about the given topic, then who is against the motion? That's a very good question. Uh, I think I'll mom, ask. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just answer this uh, for now. Satik mom, we'll go one by one. That's the reason the training has been planned over the three days. Right now, Afrin is just elucidating to the theme. She's not talking about the topics. The topics will be grade age appropriate. Uh, but the theme of what we are discussing, we are discussing India and we are not discussing, say, uh, foreign policy or we are not discussing uh, artificial intelligence. We are discussing ancient India. So she will take them through it. And we are here to take on the doubts from the children. So I'll encourage all the parents and the students to ask their questions, right? But we'll come to what you're saying a little later. That That's something that we plan for tomorrow. Yeah. And there's just a theme. So we'll still give you the topic, which basically has for and against. And we'll explain as to what the for stance is and what the against stance is. It's just the basic general theme. We will have the topics based on this theme is what the point of conversation was. Oh, all right. Um. Moving to Kavit, what's your doubt? Kavit? Uh, yes. Uh, do we only have to uh, research about the things that you are giving in the uh, bracket or the whole? Okay, topic? so this is just the general topic. So uh, this is just the general theme. Um, your topics are going to be announced soon. So when we announce the topics, then you're supposed to um, research on them but for your general knowledge you can start reading about ancient India what happened in India if you want to okay um, Yuvan like you were saying the different topics ma'am because most of ancient India like, like for some children in grade 3 we were doing a debate. Eight with my uh, with I doing the debate. Some of the people got scared because of all of the interesting facts and what happened to ancient India. Mm -hmm. So what if anyone gets scared? Like, like I didn't get scared, but what if? They... So. The first answer to the question is that you will be paired against somebody from your category. So somebody from third, fourth or fifth will go against you. The second answer is that um, you shouldn't be scared because your topics are prepared. So it's given to you prior to the round. So you get to read everything about the topic and then you get to prepare yourself for that. So you don't no, get I'm to... Like, silence. like there are lots, there's quite a lot of violence in India in the ancient times oh you're saying oh okay 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 um so i think okay that's a good question so we did have a lot of violence in ancient india but the topics are not going to be around things like war and and stuff like that so we'll have uh, topics around scientific developments for example um let's say aeroplanes or let's say cosmetic surgeries or let's say um neem and stuff like that or uh, wheat um, rice, basmati. So there's not, there's no violence in all of that. Oh, so, ma'am. Also, uh, can I ask something? Okay, Darsh, go on. That it also be about missiles like APJ Abdul Kalam and all. It could be. It could be. Do you think that comes under ancient though? But it does not come into the category of ancient, but it does it come does into not. the AI category. Yeah, it does. So when we will go come back to the AI category, we'll probably have topics something which is similar to that. Yes. In the ancient okay, category, mm -hmm. I had a question about it. We're like past presidents of India, Mahatma Gandhi, Jawaharlal, Nehru. No, they won't. They won't come into that. No. Uh, but don't get confused about what exactly comes under ancient India because we will give you topics freehand and you will get to 
um, ask us questions on those topics as well. So don't um, worry. Ma'am, what does Basmati mean for a topic? Um, no, I meant about how Basmati was actually is actually from India, but uh, Western countries actually patented it in their name. So they basically own it and not India. So it could be something related to that. As to why okay. other countries get to, yeah, exactly. All right, um, Aradhya? Ma'am, I wanted to ask, like, will we get the topics, like, prior to the you will, uh, yes. round? Yes. And ma'am, also that can, like, a grade third student compete to a grade four or fifth? Student? Yes, you can. This is why the category is three, four, five. So anyone from that category can go against you. Um, Sir, Rihan? Uh, ma'am? Okay, you're supposed to keep yourself uh, muted unless I ask you to ask question. Rihansh? Will we get the topic today? No, you won't get the topic today. You will get it prior to the rounds, but not today. How much time will we get to prepare? We will come to that in a bit, but we will give you adequate time. Um, Ara Okay, I am going to move forward with more details about the tournament, and then we can come back to more questions on things and stuff like that. Um, Excuse me, ma'am. Nobody speaks. Keep yourself muted. I will give you the chance to ask. I think most of the doubts that you may have when ma'am takes you through the presentation, let's go through it patiently and then we'll come back to you. Okay. We have time to take all your questions. So let's listen to what ma'am says. So there are key tournament days that you need to remember. From 9th October to 11th October, as you all already know, your training sessions are scheduled from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. So all three days, the training sessions are scheduled that way. Day one is going to be, and this is day one exactly. So you'll have theme explanation and format introduction today. You'll know general basic details about your format for round one. And then day two, you're going to have tips and tricks for speeches. And so how we will tell you as to how you can prepare your speeches, how you can structure your speeches, how to make a good speech, how you can use score good marks in speeches, etc. And the day three is going to be mocks and practice. So we will give you practice topics. And then you're supposed to give me um, exact, let's say, arguments and points that you're going to make in those, um, in, in for, for those. Things. So we have introduction and tricks and then we will give you the chance to actually participate in mocks and practices uh, based on your performance again. Now 27th October to 7th of November you're going to have qualifiers round. So your rounds will happen on selective selected dates which means that there are three rounds and you are supposed to attend all three rounds. Now you will only have one round per day and as you can see 27th to 7th of November is a big timeline. We will give you three selected dates and you will be only debating in those three selected dates. Um, so this is how the qualifiers on is going to happen one versus one right now. And then by the end of November, you're going to have finale at IIT Delhi, which is going to have um, semifinals and finals. So based Wait, on your performance. What? So semifinals and finals will be on the same date? Yes, they will be on the same date. All right. So, so then this is to the semi-finals and we when we go to the finals on the same day. Exactly. Yes. So um semi-finals is going to be knockout round. So whoever wins the semi-finals goes to the finals directly. Okay. Um this is if you want, so you don't technically need to take a screenshot because I'm gonna send you the PDF of this, but remember these days um as best as you can. Now, what exactly are we going to cover in all three sessions? Today, we're going to cover, as I already explained the theme to you, uh, but then I'm also going to tell you format introduction. Day two, we're going to have what um, training on what exactly is one versus one format. How exactly are you supposed to fulfill your speaker role? And how exactly are you supposed to structure your arguments? And how can you respond to the other person? For example, I'm making a point. Somebody else is contradicting my point. So how can I basically contradict his point? Uh, or in general, how can I contradict somebody's point? Or how can I disprove somebody's point? The third session is going to be mock debates and case prep session. So I'm going to give you topics and then you're going to tell me as to, okay, if this is the topic, what would you run on proposition? How would you support this motion? How will you oppose this topic, et cetera, et cetera. So this is what the three days plan, training session plan looks like. I will now entertain questions on the training session. Um, Nitara, what's your question? Nobody speaks unless I give you the chance to speak. Nitara? Ma'am, so will you give the topics or we have to prepare with our own research? 
um so topics will be released later but for for you to practice right now i'll give you um mock practice to topics on third of uh, i think the third day of training okay um devika yes ma'am what's your doubt your hand is raised yeah i was asking that when will the practice tournament happen when when will the practice tournament happen november 11th the third the third day is only about mocks so um, after you could show the slide so the third day so tomorrow so is the format and the third day is when we are doing the practice ma'am yeah, does that clarify mitara yes ma'am so we all set you know what this is an interactive session so this is an interactive session so afreen ma'am will keep asking you questions okay we want to make sure that all of you are completely comfortable with the format that we are teaching you all right um arshia what your doubt so ma'am like is it fine if we can't come on 10th and 11th because we have uh, camps during school so the training sessions are going to be recorded if you want you can see them later but arshya we would greatly encourage you to at least keep aside three days because we've seen that training makes a difference to how will you understand the format and when you debate a lot of marks are given to following the rules right so if i can uh, you know request you all to take out time from 5 to 6:30 tomorrow and day after you guys will be awesome ma'am but uh, we are Mom, but we are going for like camps during school, so we are going like. No worries. Like so these trainings are happening, and they're getting recorded. Refer to that. Ash, um, okay. Uh, Ash, can I add something? Uh, go okay. ahead. Um, ma'am, I might be not. I might not be doing the uh, training sessions on Friday. You could have to go to the doctor on every Friday. Okay. Um, you can. Text us these individual um problems on WhatsApp. Yeah, but the point is, is this is Anil is Monday, yeah. Tuesday, and Wednesday, so we'll be done by Wednesday. But let's yeah. focus on the group on the training. Excuse me, ma'am. Can I ask something, ma'am? Only if it is relevant for everybody else. Darsh, we'll follow that rule. Is that okay? Yeah, ma'am. Okay. Um, Anaga, what's your doubt? do all the rounds like be individual or do we have to team up um so round 1 um is one versus one there's no team okay okay um, i have a question um so, just a second after that do we have to team up we will make the team for you there's you don't have to team up Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Um, and all of these questions we can basically answer once one versus one round is over. Um, yes, Nandini, what's your doubt? Ma'am, how many days will we get to prepare the final? To final? Ma'am, how many days will we get to prepare a speech for the final? Final, as in the one that is happening in Delhi. Yes. If you we get selected. Yes, so there's so much more time for that. We'll answer these questions later, but you will get adequate time for that. Um, Dash, what's your question? Now I have one more question. That yes. um, ma'am, uh, will yeah. the will there be also about freedom because it has no war? What do you mean? Uh, will there be um freedom fight? I mean, a freedom. And in the pending. freedom fighters will sorry, freedom fighters come under this topic? No. Um, in the ancient India, no. Um, because uh, and India... also um, if we argue, then that is against the rule. Uh, but you won't have to argue something about that. Um, but you, if you want to make references from history, you can, if it is relevant to your topic. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, um, Nandini, so Nandini, what's your second question? So that. So there is nothing about um independence. Only about scientific development, right? So yeah, for the round one, yes. Miss. Okay. Yes, Nandini. 
Ma'am, um, ma'am, will we have rebuttals? You will have rebuttals. I'll come back to the format training in a bit. Yes. Okay, um, Kavit, what's your doubt? Ma'am. I'll come back to you. Nobody speaks. Kavit, what's your doubt? Ma'am, in the study panel, that panelists will be get your research. Um. So it depends. Um. We will make sure that it's tougher than the qualifiers. But yes, you will have. Uh, for one of the topics, you will for sure have research time. Ma'am? And now I have another doubt. Okay, ask mm -hmm. that. Uh, with the results of the debate, like uh, which side was proposition or opposition announced after it? or No, so for, round, so for these individual rounds, you won't get the verdict after your rounds. Okay, um, Anushta, what's your question? Can I request everybody to ask questions on uh, what Afri and Ma'am has covered? Because, you know, some people are debating for the first time. They're still trying to understand what is being said. So ask the questions relevant to what Ma'am has said. But uh, Afri, please take your call to keep pacing it your way. Yeah? Yeah, okay. Um. All right. I think I'm just now going to tell you about the format 1v1. I think a lot of questions are related to Mom, I just want okay, to I'll take tell you two questions. I'll take two questions and then I'll move forward. Yuvan, what's your doubt? And then Aradhya. Now, now my doubt is, <clears throat> so what if like I live in Delhi, but uh, the, normally the, uh, where are, what if like in the finals, there's like it's raining a lot? Yuvan, Yuvan, we love it that you love to express your opinion, but this is not relevant for the group. To know and yeah. to answer. So let's go back to the training. All of yeah. you can't hold your doubt. You can use a chat box. I'm watching it. But I'll greatly it's encourage you. Hold on, all of you. Nobody speaks when we are speaking. We would want you to please go over the format. So everybody, hands down for now. Focus on knowing what the format is. And then we will use a chat box or ask, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So I'll first tell you as to what the rubric is. So, how exactly are you judged? There is three there are three criteria on which you're judged. And this is called 3M principle. Um, the way how you have learned 3R principle in your schools. So this is 3M, matter, manner, and method. So there are three things that you should absolutely perfect in yourself in order to get good marks in the speeches. So 10 marks are going to be given to you if your matter is good, if you have researched well, and your research is re relevant to the topic and site. For example, my research could be absolutely amazing, but I'm speaking for the wrong side. For example, I was supposed to speak for, but I prepared for, for, for the against side. So that's that's the time I'm going to reduce your scores. Um, the second thing is, how exactly are you giving examples? Is there quality in your argument? Are you just saying things or you, are you actually, actually explaining those things? So is this, is this clear enough for me to understand as to what the person is trying to make? What is the point of the speech, et cetera, et cetera? So your matter is more in terms of your research. Um, is it relevant to the topic? Is it relevant to the sites? And are you actually making enough illustrations in your speech in order for the person to understand what you're saying? So you're supposed to impress your judges. And I'm telling you three ways how you can impress your judges. That's the first way. The second way is manner. Eye contact is really, really important when you're speaking, which means that the way how you're presenting yourself, you could have extremely amazing content, but then you're not able to express it to the judge. You're not able to make sure that the judge is listening to you. You're not able to make sure that the judge is probably engaged with you. So all of it is very important for public speaking. So you're supposed to make sure that one, you're not reading off the top, which means that you can refer to the sheets, but you're not supposed to continuously look into the sheet and speak. So you can refer to the sheets, but you're not supposed to read out from the sheet. So for example, I have a paragraph. I can read one sentence from your from a sheet, but then rest of it is something which is in my mind and I can basically make eye contact. So don't refer to sheets in such a way that you're, that you're, that you're breaking eye contact and you're breaking your expressions. You're supposed to express yourself through um, facial expressions, through hand gestures, through, through voice modulation, etc. Your ethical conduct is also very important. So we highly discourage things like um, being violent in the debates or being rude to your uh, to your opponents, etc. So you're not supposed to do any of that. Um, so this is what manner means. You should have good manner. If you have good manner, the judges are going to score you well. The last way is method. So, so one of the very important things is are you sticking to the time limit? Are you speaking extra or are you speaking extremely less? So your time limit is three minutes. 
uh, if you're speaking for four minutes, that's also not good. The judges are going to thank you, thank your scores for that. If you're speaking for two minutes, uh, the, the judges are probably going to score you less for that as well. But if you're speaking for two minutes, 45 seconds, that's all right. If you're speaking for three minutes, 15 seconds, that's all right. So the idea is that you have a window of 15 seconds. So three minutes is your time. You can finish 15 seconds prior or after this, after three minutes, but you cannot finish before way before your time limit or way after your time limit the judges are going to tell you as to when your time is getting over uh but as as good debaters you should always have stopwatch and timer with you and you should time yourself so in terms of method you're supposed to make sure that you're engaging with the opponents which means that after you've listened to their speeches you're supposed to ask them questions. You're supposed to question them on your own or cont contradict their points, etc. cetera. Um, but also in your speech, um, oftentimes what happens is that we have really good content, but it's not organized in a way which is structured enough for the judge to understand. So you're supposed to make sure that your speeches are in such a way that it's structured and it is basically, um, and it's, it's, it's basically, um, it's, it's understandable to the person who's listening to that. So three things, if you are going to make sure that all of these things, three things, and if you're going to perfect, like practice well, you're going to be able to score as best as a 30, a, a, a perfect score of 30. We've had students who have actually scored 30. It's not an unachievable goal. Uh, this is what, how the judges are going to score you. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back to the next slide. Um, which go back to the format training again, which is what is one versus one. So you have basically two speeches to deliver. So I think the first thing that I need to need you to understand is that you're one person going against the other person. How will you know who you're going against? We will tell you which room you are supposed to go in and we will tell you who you're going against. So for example, if it is Aradhya, Aradhya will know who exactly is the person going against that person. For example, it could be Satvik. So Satvik and Aradhya are going to, going to be in the same team. But I'll also tell you whether you're proposition or opposition. But before that, what is proposition? Proposition is the person who is supporting the topic. For example, if the topic is schools are good, so proposition is going to say that, yes, schools are good. Uh, but if you're opposition, you're going to negate that and you're going to say that, hey, schools are not good. So this is how proposition and opposition works. Proposition supports the topic. Opposition opposes the topic and negates that. So you will be given a side and you'll be given a topic. So I will tell you prior that, listen, this is your topic for this round and you're going to speak opposition. So you're supposed to prepare for opposition. But how exactly will the debate function? Um, so you will have to prepare for three minutes of constructive speech and three minutes of reply speech. Three minutes of constructive speech is basically um, when you're supposed to like basically write every single thing about your, um, this is my introduction, this is my argument, this is my reasonings for the arguments, and this is my conclusion, right? Um, so you will basically try to convince and defend your point in those three minutes. After which your opponents are gonna speak for three minutes, after which you get this chance. So here's the thing, right? So if the flow is the person who is supporting the topic will get to speak first for three minutes, after which the person who is opposing the topic will get to speak next for three minutes. So the proposition has now heard the opposition speaker and now will reply to the opposition. Speakers. Now, how will you reply? So for your reply speeches as well, you have three minutes. Now, the way how you're actually going to reply is let's say opposition said this, but we highly disagree with this. And then you'll tell you, you'll, you'll tell reasons as to why you disagree with your opponents because you've heard your opponents' points. So your reply speech is basically a reply to whatever you've heard your opponents on. So you, you can contradict them, you can disprove them, you can question them in the speech, et cetera, et cetera. Um, similarly, since proposition gets to respond to opposition, Opposition will also get the chance to respond to proposition. So if you're opposition speaker, you'll now have, have three minutes to reply to your proposition. So this is how the structure works. Each person gets to speak twice. You have a prepared three minute speech of constructive speech where you get to defend your point, but you have another speech for three minutes where you get to basically prove why your opponents are wrong. This is what will happen in the debate. Proposition speaks first, then opposition, then proposition again, and then opposition. Now, the things that I want to clarify here is that one, it is one versus one format. I think it's very clear. So you will have one main speech and one reply speech. Second, two of your topics are going to be shared before the qualifiers and one 
one will be impromptu. Um, so I think we'll see about how many rounds are going to be impromptu and how many grounds are going to be prepared since this very um, small junior category. We'll try to see to give you as much amount of time as possible. Um, and then the duration of your speech is three minutes. You cannot ask direct questions to your opponents. For example, you can you cannot interrupt your opponents in their speech in order to ask questions. But then within your speeches, if you want to throw questions on your opponents, you can. Um, the verdicts, obviously, as I said, are not going to be disclosed in this round. So you just basically debate, you ba go back, come back to the next round. The judges are just going to fill uh, scores on you. You won't get your verdict in this round. Um, so before I move forward with any kind of clarifications, are there any doubts on the format that I've shared with you? Um, okay, keep your keep your hands up. I'm going to ask. On the chat, I mean, um, okay, I think it's better if you put it in the chat box. Yeah, I'm okay. Ma'am, can I just ask you my question? Yes, Anya. Ma'am, um, the 1v1 format, will we follow it in the first round? All three rounds. The first oh. three rounds. So you'll have three rounds in the one versus one format. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Um, Kashvi, yes. Ma'am, I was saying that I just have a class in the uh, in another ten minutes. So can I leave? So all of these individual questions you can ask on chat, but yes, you can leave. Ma'am, um, I asked. Excuse me, ma'am. Okay. Um, just a second. Aradhya, what's your doubt? I think we uh, I think we could uh, look at the chat and let's go one by one. Okay. The first question is, is reply speech going to be rebuttals? Yes, exactly. Reply speech is rebuttals. Um, will we be given opposition or proposition or, okay, you will not choose your proposition and opposition. We will give you as to who get both proposition and opposition. Yes. Um, no, you, if you have any doubt, just put it in the chat box. The next question is, will all students have different topics? No, for round one, so it's going to be based on rounds. So for each round, everybody gets the same topic. So round one, this is your topic, and this is going to be the topic for the entire grade four, three, four, and five. Kavit, we have already responded that, yes, reply speeches are rebuttals. The topic for round one has not been shared yet. We will be sharing round round wise topics in some time. We are just training you right now with respect to the format and theme. The topic will be released as it is supposed to be released. Will we be given time to prepare the rebuttal speech or will we have to prepare impromptu or earlier? So that's a very good question. So you will actually not have time to prepare your reply speech. The only time that you'll get to prepare your reply speech is when your opponents are speaking. So you probably technically have three minutes because your opponents are speaking in that time. So you're supposed to be very quick with your thoughts. So so just remember what your opponent said and then pro probably try to articulate your thoughts. But I think the second thing that you that that you can probably do is um probably write speech for your impromptu as well. So in your reply speech, you can do two things. One, you can preempt things. For example, I know for a fact that there are certain things that my opponents are going to run. So I'm going to prepare it like before the debate as to, okay, if my opponents say this, I'm going to speak these lines. Um, the second thing that you can do is summarize what you exactly said in your speech. So you can basically be like, um, this is what I said in my first speech, and this is why it's more important than what the opponent said. So in your reply speech, um, you can basically give a couple of things in terms of um, rebuttals, in terms of why your... Um, why your points are more important, why you should win the debate, etc. So in the, these things are something that you can actually already prepare as opposed to make it 100% impromptu. Um, so we prepare two speeches um, and you give us opposition or proposition. Correct, Satvik, that's correct. Um, what does reply format mean? It's very confusing. So reply is, um, so I think I will give you more details about what your st structure in terms of reply speech should look like tomorrow. Uh, the general idea is exactly what the term says, reply. Reply to your opponents. Because there is one person speaking against you who has a different opinion than you, 
you're supposed to reply to that person. You're supposed to tell us to why whatever that person is saying is wrong or why whatever you, what you are saying is more important and why should the judge be like, convinced by you and not them. So reply is more in terms of, hey, I've heard you, but I think this is where you're wrong and this is why exactly it's debate. Um, okay. So we have to tell um why is our topic important and why is the opponent's topic not important if there is not. Correct, yes. Um, Amira, no, it's not similar to Duncourt format. Um, do we have to win all three rounds to get selected? Um, I think it depends. So it depends on your scores. It doesn't depend on your wins. Um, so you should probably, if your scores are extremely high, um, that's what, and the average of your score is going to be taken from all three rounds. So you're supposed to attend all rounds and prepare well for all three rounds. Will we be told about our scores? After the finale, you will be told about your scores. Um, do we have to win all three rounds to get selected? I think I've already answered that question. Um, somebody has asked about their birthday. So um, I think um, it, happy birthday in advance. We'll all you... celebrate with you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Okay. Coming back to the training and then I'll take those questions again. Um, the next thing that you need to know is just different kinds of topic that I have cho chosen for you. This is not the topic for your debate. This is not the topic for the, for your debate. I'm repeating again. Um, this is just examples. For example, as I told you, like a couple of topics could be, I told you don't annotate, we no. Um, okay, so the first topic that I've put like, taken for you is this house believes that India should be portrayed as a center of knowledge with reference to the Vedic age. So the general understanding of this topic is that proposition will say that yes, India is the knowledge center of the entire like center of knowledge. And you can probably give so many examples from the Vedic age as to why India should be called center of knowledge. On opposition, you could say why India should not be called the center of knowledge with respect to the Vedic age, what all went wrong, what all did we not do. But also you could probably compare it with other nations and say as to why other nations are probably center of knowledge, et cetera, et cetera. The second topic is this house regrets Indian rulers that become became allies of the Mughal empire. Now, the idea is that here, what we're basically doing is that um, there were a couple of Indian rulers who became friends with Mughal Empire. So we basically are saying that that's wrong. So on proposition, you'll say, no, I think in, if Indian rulers did not became, become friends with Mughal Empire, that would have been much better. And then on opposition, you would be like, hey, that's not true. I think Indian rulers becoming allies with the Mughal Empire is actually really nice. Um, then the last thing or last example is this house would ban products in India, which are wrongly appropriated by West. I, I exactly gave you the same example. Um, so we have had patenting of meme, which means that um, Western Western countries have basically told that meme is something that we could basically use as medicines and they have patented it and owned it, uh, which is something that is appropriation of what India has done. India is something that is originator of that. So we, what India would do is basically ban all of these products that have been wrongly appropriated by Western countries. Um, and on proposition, you'll tell reasons as to why we should ban it. On opposition, you'll say, no, I think we shouldn't ban it because of different reasons. For example, they are literally from our own country. You probably out like give them those products. So a, a lot of our industries are basically um, funded by them and all of that. So this is just example of what topics could come, what kind of topics could come. Not these, these topics are probably not gonna come at all. So just don't think of that. But like, yeah, these are the kind of topic that could come. Um, but the important idea is that you all hear about it, that we come from a nation that has got a very rich history. So why don't we think about some of those? So we would love it. You can use the WhatsApp group, give us some thoughts on how you feel proud about India. But the topics will be around that. You are sitting on the 9th, 10th, 11th. We will do loads of practice. You can do some light reading. But the fact is that the topics will be released to you only after the 21st of October. So please enjoy mm -hmm. yourself, but don't forget your training. Can you all promise me that, please? Yeah? So whatever Afrin ma'am teaches you today, don't forget that. But don't worry about, uh, you know, reading just for this. Just have a conversation with your parents. Ask them to tell you some nice stories. You can do some light reading as well. But we will give you the topics after 21st of October, which is when we finish the last training batch. Okay, and we will give you adequate time to prepare it. 
we will not give you study material sarpik but we will give you two or three days to prepare it okay which means that you will have enough time to research have a good conversation um and uh, you know i'm and we've done it many times so we know that two three days is enough it doesn't require more than that and i think afin ma'am i liked your tip which is to say i could prepare for both the speeches before the debate and then think of what i want to say incrementally so that's a good suggestion but we'll do that some practice on that later right Yes, Nivan. The topics are going to be different for all the three rounds. The first round is about ancient India. The second round is going to be about medieval, and the last one is going to be about artificial intelligence. Okay, so topics will be different, but we will make sure that you understand the topics very well uh, before you start preparation for it. Yes, Afreen, ma'am. All right. So there are four clarifications um, based on what I have already told you. One is that. All three rounds will have three motions. So, in each round, you have a different motion or topic. The second clarification is that attending and preparing for all rounds is mandatory. So, you cannot choose to opt out from any of the of the rounds for a couple of reasons. Actually, one because average of all three rounds has been taken into consideration for you to qualify the interstate rounds. The second is that. um the more rounds you actually debate the more fulfill you fulfilled you will feel because you have you get to debate against three different people and you will get to learn a lot more um than just probably debating one or two rounds and lastly i think you just improve with rounds we have seen debaters do absolutely amazing with second and third round so you could probably go bad like your first round would probably go bad uh because of a lot of factors but then your second you could probably work harder and then come back the next round and do better so that's the aim of three rounds you get three chances to prove your um, ability in front of the judges so average of all rounds is going to be considered i think i have i've already mentioned that um and lastly i think you i mean it's just obvious that you can refer to sheets uh for giving your speeches but do not read out your entire speech so it shouldn't be like all three i it's should it shouldn't be like um i have a sheet or i have like Uh, my word document open in front of me, and the judges can literally make out that I am reading from a document. It just shows that you're not prepared well for the tournament. So do not do that. That's pretty much it about what we had to say. Um, now I think I can, um, stop sharing and and deal with a lot of questions that you all have. Um, keep your hands raised, and I will choose as to who we can speak. Um, Sathvik, what's your doubt? I think that's my mistake. Okay. I know. How do you get lower their hand? Okay. Okay, that's my mistake. All right. Um, Aradhya. Okay. Vaishnavi, you can ask the question. Uh, ma'am, will uh all of us be selected like one from fifth grade, one from third grade, and so on? Will it be selected so it be like that? selection is based on the category so 3 4 5th your um irrespective of whichever grade you come from you are selected based on your performance in that category so it's not based on grades but we do have individual awards grade wise um but yeah no selection grade wise so uh, mom it can be like all children from third grade and like that yes yeah. yes yes okay mom can i ask uh, something can i go to you also for this one minute Yeah, yeah, you can go. It's all right. You don't have to ask such questions if you want to leave. Um, okay. Um, Saranya. Ma'am, um, if can we memorize our speech? Yes, you can. That's perfect. Anaya. Ma'am, will we be given like our opponent will be of the same age or the same grade or like supposing sixth and eighth? No, so your opponents are going to be from the same category, so they can be from third or fourth or fifth grade. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, Dash, I think Dash just went. Ah, uh, Sadanya so done. Aratya done. Are there any more questions? Then I will check the chat box as well now. Ah, uh, excuse me. I just want to raise a concern. I yeah. mean, ah, uh, isn't this kind of unfair for a third grader to be debating for the fifth grader? There is like so much of difference in their knowledge, their articulation skills, uh, like everything. 
so, so um, I, I think it we do it all the time and this is the first time a third grader is debating but we have seen debaters who are in the younger category do much better than the the elder ones so it's not about which grade you actually come from but the more you go into the debating uh, world and circuit you will see that a person uh, like you don't have age age criteria and stuff like that so i think it's just to prepare them for so, a better and more competitive world i'm just going to give you a flavor also swat satvik's mom um the international tournaments grade from grade 6 to 12 all compete together yeah and uh, we are very mindful of uh, making sure that a third to fifth grader is not going into another grade and trust me it's not so much about uh only one aspect of a fifth grader sounding more confident it's a combination of matter manner and method and you'll be surprised how the underdogs are the third graders or fourth graders because they are far more meticulous because probably they're doing it for the first time so what does under be... they what does uh, under dog mean underdog means somebody you weren't expecting to win that how can a third grader beat a fifth grader but we see this all the time so i want the third graders to feel very confident about your probability but i want you to make sure that you understand the formats well right uh it's my assurance and you should show in uh, see our youtube videos as well you'll be surprised how good hard work will help you prepare well okay so ma'am we are watching uh, we are on this Okay, the one thing that I also want to reiterate is that people who are asking about who won last year, you should really go and watch YouTube. So there is there are all recorded links from last year's matches, um, specifically finals. So you can always go and watch who was the match between and who exactly won, and you can always comment as to who you think should win, uh, should have won. So I mean, all of that is always appreciated. So go back to the YouTube channel of Ogly, and you'll love to see the debates that happened. It was absolutely amazing. Um. Okay. So when will your uh, all of these questions about like sites and topics? I think you will get it after twenty first, as what Ma'am said. Uh, you will get your sites and your topics after twenty first. So you have ten days of time, and you are more advantage like or the advantage is position. that you can prepare self prepare with different topics you can learn more you can read more um about the topic you you can just generally be aware about what the topic is um but yes um Next the pass, yes in the past mythology is will gods like the names being told i'm sorry i couldn't catch catch the question can you repeat it Since it is past, like mythology, will mm -hmm. gods and such topics of gods will be included? I'm not sure if topics of gods will be given to you, but I think you can make references from mythology because a lot of my what mythology gives you is references to a lot of research and uh, discoveries that India has done. So you will get reference. You can use references from mythology as well. Yes. Books of God can help us in our topic. No, I mean it's not about God. It's about it's about um various scriptures and books that basically tell you about history of India. So that's more important and relevant. So उनका चल रहा है बच्चों का छोटे बच्चों का. Just listen to it. It's okay. Okay. Um, I think I think that's pretty much it. Then um, are there any more questions? Yeah, Darsh, tell me. Well, is that do we have to study? Uh, will you teach us um uh, the the history of India, or do we have to do we have to learn it by ourselves? So you're not supposed to learn it by yourself as well. And I'm not going to teach you about history of India, but I'm going to teach you relevant things that you can use for the debate. Uh, but secondly, I think it's always amazing to watch relevant YouTube videos. Um, or like generally you like use and watch videos that you can basically see about the topic. So you'll also you, be very self-aware about the topic. But, yes. but some you mean we can see Indian. You mean we can see Indian mythology about Indian mythology to you too? No, it that's not relevant to the topic per se. But you can read about what happened to Indian rulers. What were the scientific developments that India made? How did West appropriate it? All of that. Yes. Well, well, then we can buy book. 
yeah just so you can just read about that for now uh until your topic has been given so you're just into the zone of debating yes nitara what's your question uh hello ma'am i'm nitara's the uh, mom so yes. ask about this that uh, uh you've said that there, there's going to be like three uh, rounds like about a medieval india and then like you know uh, like ancient india so uh, like uh, the first round will be ancient india and then it's can be it can be any topic right so that's you going to tell us later no so um, i think that was just broad understanding of the tournaments theme in general so ancient medieval and um and the and the and the more modern india but for your one versus one round it's all about ancient unsung his like unsung uh, uh, developments that india has done so sub sub topic for round one or one versus one all three rounds is going to be un- unsung uh, discoveries of india so all of the discoveries that india has made in past and history and how they were probably uh, forgotten or how they were appropriated by different countries it's going to be about that which is okay. an example she shared ma'am like neem you know okay. small things like these we just want people or children to just dig deeper on okay. some of those um more but... discovery about india and like you know what has been happened in the ancient times yeah, and, uh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. but we give adequate time when we declare the topics and the motions we give them adequate time to go deeper into it uh, and you can always ask this relevant question yeah just the conversation in the house about india would be lovely Uh, even mm-hmm. I want to encourage uh, that the dining table needs to start talking about where we come from, okay. and that's the whole spirit of it. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. Sure, all of you have been very patient. I am very impressed with the youngest lot for sitting for one plus hour. So, if there mm-hmm. aren't any questions, uh, don't raise your hand. If there are questions, we are right here. But I would. not want to eat into your play time after ma'am unless you're going deeper into the format today you could tell them what to mm-hmm. do before they come into this think, i think this this is pretty much it i will now ask you questions okay just for so for for me to understand if you understood what i told you uh my first question is and also please keep your hands on the chat box so that you can answer yes. as chat box possible. competition be ready yes chat box competition let's do it um have you seen kbc fastest fingers first let's see who does that um okay My first question is: How many debaters are going to go against you in round one? Just put in the chat box. All those saying one is correct. I don't know why some people said fifty. The question was: How many debaters go against you in round one? It's only one, so you go against one person because the format is one versus one. So all those who got it right, congratulations. The second question is: So you're supposed to answer in yes or no, okay? The second question is: Will your will your uh, topics be same in all three rounds, or will they be different? So are the topics same? Yes, the answer is no. The topics are going to be different. That's correct. Now, the second question, like the third question, is how many speeches are you supposed to give in one round? There is a difference of opinion, but the answer is two. You're supposed to give only two speeches in one round. the okay um that's correct um but the last question the last question for fastest fingers first is how many minutes of speech are you supposed to give in one round so what's the time limit The answer is three. So all those who got it correct, congratulations! <laughs> See, I think most of you all are already aware about the format. I am so happy. Um, but again, just so we have more idea, there are two speeches that you are supposed to give, as you all understood. What are the two speeches called? So name the two speeches. Type it. type it in one 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 message itself so what are the two speeches called
let me see what everybody replies and then I'll find out whose answer is correct. <laughs> The answer is the two speeches are called constructive and reply. So all those who got it right, congratulations. <laughs> Perfect. I think most of you all got it. But like, okay, I have one more question then. Um, Mama, Mama, I just got it wrong, but then one wrote constructed, so then I agreed with constructive. And Perfect. I got it right, ma'am. I can ma tell you, this is the junior most group <laughs> that knows what a constructive speech is. Afin, ma'am, is <laughs> hell-bent on teaching you. Very good job. I'm very impressed. Carry on, Afin. Last question, then. My question is going to be um, a sentence, and then you're supposed to say true or false, okay? Opposition supports the topic. True or false? Yes, that's the correct answer. It's false. Perfect. I think we all got the format and the theme correct. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I think we can end the session for the junior category. So juniors, you all can leave and we'll see you tomorrow. Three to four. Miss? Miss, Miss, all, question. Happen, Miss all the three rounds happen on the same day. No, they happen on different dates. It's like one round each day? Yes. Okay. Bye, Mom. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Mom. Mom. Bye, Mom. Mom. Thank you, Mom. Mom, can fourth grade live, leave now? Yes, third, fourth, and fifth grade can leave. Bye, Mom. Thank you, Mom. Bye, Mom. Bye-bye. Um, I'm, I'm going to be happy. Bye. <laughs> Middle school for you, Afrin, you got Jeshi for